In some situations when we're working with sines and cosines, it'll come up um, that we use a form like this that just involves a sine and there's a phase angle here. And it, it can come up the question or wondering, you know, if we know that in general um, the solution to something is a combination of sines and cosines, how can we justify just writing the answer as a single sign? And the point of this video is just to demonstrate that um, these forms are equivalent. You can uh, rewrite this expression on the left, which only involves a sign, uh, frequency, this independent variable, t, time, and this uh, phase shift angle here as a combination of sines and cosines of the same frequency. So just to get avoid, just to get around that issue of um, why are we not using any cosines? Why is it just a sine? Well, it's equivalent to something with sines and cosines. Um, so basic uh, definitions here, A is the amplitude of our wave. Uh, omega, this W looking thing is the frequency. T is time. Um, and this phi is the phase angle. So what the phase angle does is it it shifts the uh, sine wave from the origin to uh, position backwards by this uh, phi angle, by that amount. Um, yeah, I don't. It doesn't really show exactly how much this is moving, but it's dependent on phi. It's not like exactly phi. So we want to get it into a form uh, with coef unknown coefficients on sine and cosine. So our job is to try to figure out if we can rewrite this uh, to look like the right side and figure out what the coefficients b and c should be. To start things off, our expression on the left, the one that we want to change, is like a term here and another term here. So what we're going to leverage is this trig identity involving um, signs of a sum of x and y. So this identity allows us to go from um, a single sign to sines and cosines. So just following along this thing here, which uh, is not going to be proven, but we're just going to use it. Uh, you can, I never memorize these things, I always forget them, but you can kind of see how there's a symmetry to it. Sine x, cosine y, and then you switch over cosine x, sine y. And we're just going to plug in what we got in here with omega t and this negative phi, negative phi or phi. I never remember how to correctly say these things. It's just like whatever sounds good in my head at the time. And we're just going to plug it into here and then we're going to see what turns out. So x is omega t, y is negative phi. Put it all in here and then we can use some um, uh, cosine and sine properties involving the negative of something. So uh, cosine just uh, squelches that n negative. Uh, cosine of negative x is the same as cosine of x. And uh, the sine preserves that uh, negative sine. So sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. And once we uh, take these terms and kind of separate out the things that we're interested in, we can see that it's basically a coefficient in front of a sine omega t added to another coefficient times cosine of omega t. And that's exactly what we're, we're, we were searching for, trying to get to, as we want to find a uh, linear combination of sines and cosines with the same frequency. 
So we got that. We got B is A cosine of the phase angle phi. C is the negative A sine of the phase angle phi. A being the amplitude of our original wave. So that gives us the forward direction and allows us to show that what we started with can be written in terms of sines and cosines. Uh, that's good, but in order to convince ourselves that they're truly equal, well, what if we start with just uh, sines and cosines? Is there a way to get to an uh, expression just involving the sine? And show that it's equal. If they're really the same thing, uh, we should be able to go both directions. So let's start out assuming that we know B and C, and we need to find out then, if we want the expression on the left, we need to find out what the big A amplitude and the phase angle should be. So we can use what we already figured out, and uh, that shouldn't be much trouble. We know C and B in terms of A and phi. So let's take C divided by B in order to cancel out this A term. And then what we're left with is a tangent term. It gives us the negative tangent of phi. We bring that negative sign over and it gives us the tangent of phi is equal to negative C over B. And then we can use an inverse tan function to isolate this angle phi. So how you actually evaluate this tan inverse function is something that's a job for your calculator. Um, if they're not basic f angles that you can like l look at a graph and then kind of guess. But that's good enough. Like we have a way to get to it, even if we manually will probably not be able to. Uh, do in our heads. We have an expression for it, and uh, doing the this evaluation is easy. Just we know what tan phi is, at least. So our next uh, unknown that we have is our amplitude, and that's also no trouble because knowing C and B we can uh, leverage this identity from trigonometry where the sine squared of any angle plus the cosine squared of that same angle is going to give us one. It's just from how sines and cosines are defined on that unit circle. So when we square C and add to the square of B, we're going to get that identity to pop out. We have a sine phi squared gives us a squared sine squared phi. We have a cosine, and it's going to be a negative there, but it it's uh, negated by multiplying by itself. So we just get a positive a squared cosine squared phi, and then we group the sine squared cosine squared terms. That's going to give us an one here, multiplying by a squared. So we know a squared equals c squared plus b squared. That means that a equals the square root of b squared plus c squared. Oh, how, how do we know it's not the negative of it? And I guess that's a question that somebody might ask. I didn't really think about that. It doesn't really bother me. What if I picked a negative of it? Would that screw things up? It should flip that sign upside down. I 
Yeah, I guess we could just say that uh, A is, in our original thing, a positive value. I mean, that would make sense, because amplitude of a wave is... an amplitude is a positive thing. You can say something has a negative amplitude, but you're kind of saying it has a positive amplitude, but it's in, in the opposite direction. Well, I'm not going to go into that further. It's not really a big deal to me. So, uh, with the kind of formulas that we get, it's just good to try some examples just to make sure that what we think we know is actually usable. So we just pick some random numbers here, like five and three seem like good integers to me. So I'm going to start with the left side with an expression just involving sine. I'm going to pick a phase angle, and instead of picking pi, I started out with pi, but that doesn't really give us an interesting answer because it's going to eliminate one of the terms, the cosine term. I just pick pi over 3, it's pretty simple, and uh, since we're, this is an angle, we want to pick something involving pi, because we're working with radians. Alright, so to evaluate this, we need to find b and c, and uh, b is given by the amplitude 5 times the cosine of this phase angle, and the cosine of negative pi over 3 is the same as the cosine of pi over 3, and that gives us a one half. Um, no, I don't remember doing this in my head. I just kind of fiddle around with numbers I remember gave us kind of a uh, reasonable integer looking fractions. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people have this stuff memorized, but I never remembered. So, but I know pi over three is one of those good numbers. So I tried it. Um, sine of pi over 3 is the same as negative sine of pi over 3 and uh, it gives us a somewhat nice number, not as good looking, but I remember there's a square root of 3 over 2 that pops up when you put one of these numbers in and it happens to be pi over 3 so that gives us a C coefficient it's the amplitude times the sine of the phase angle and so we got these two numbers for B and C when our A is 5, V is pi over 3 and alright on paper that's what we get but it was just good to check it so with graphing calculators and programs it's not very hard to take a look this is the expression on the left I use x here instead of t because that's what the calculator recognizes. And so visually we get a look at it. And now we have to compare it to the second expression on the right with b and c plugged in. And you can see they overlap exactly. They're the same graph. When I turn the second one off, the red color shows the first graph. I turn the second one on, the green color shows the second, and they overlap. And uh, I can alternate. Alright, so that's reassuring that what we did was correct. Let's move on to the second one. Second example is when we want to go the other direction. We have an expression with sines and cosines, and we want to make it compact into an expression just involving a sine. So again, I just pick some nice looking integers and see what came out. Pick 2 for the sine coefficient, 3 for the cosine coefficient, and for the frequency I picked 5. Frequency doesn't matter at all in any of these, but um, it's just so we have a number to graph, and some people like to have numbers instead of variables whenever they can to make it more concrete, I guess. So. Instead of omega, we just put in a number. It doesn't affect any of the calculations. 
Um, all right, so to get the amplitude of this condensed form of the wave, I guess, we have to square the coefficients and then add them together, then take the square root. So two and three are the coefficients. We have two squared plus three squared equals 13. Square root that, and that's our amplitude. So square root of 13. And then for the phase angle, that's a lot more difficult to find a number for. So I'm just going to leave it as the inverse tangent of negative c over b, which is negative 3 over 2. And um, calculator will evaluate that, but I don't know if that's any use at all, because it's just some number. Arctan, negative 3 over 2, negative 0 0.9827, and I don't know what that is at all. But I can just uh, put that expression as it, it as it originally is unevaluated into the graphing calculator and compare the two results. And again, you see they are the same. Turn the first one on in red, turn the second one on in green, exact overlap, and I can alternate them to see that they are in fact the same. Um, so the motivation again behind all this was to say that if you have an expression in terms of just sines, you can always think of it as an expression involving sines and cosines because they are equivalent. The coefficients will be different, um, but the like intuitive concept behind it is the same. You can always think of whatever wave that you're given as a combination of sines and cosines, even if it is just expressed as a single sine. The same applies if, it, if it's a cosine. Um, you can do the same type of calculations to go from one form to the other. And sine and cosine only differ by like a phase angle anyways. So they're, they're pretty much equivalent. Um, and another in thing to note is that here we have two unknown coefficients, potentially unknown coefficients, uh, parameters would be, I guess, the appropriate term. And on this side here, we also have two unknown parameters, which we can vary. So it matches. It's uh, reasonable. So like we would expect that to be the case for it to work and that's that is the case and it does work so kind of just like a the check just to make sure everything's okay nothing's nothing screwy is going on that we don't really understand that we don't know um, that seems like hand waving and um, hopefully for me, this makes me feel good when I can fall back on this knowledge and rely on this. And uh, hopefully it will be useful to situations where you have to solve differential equations involving sines and cosines. And um, you're looking for a general form of solution. And uh, it would make sense for a general solution to have sines and cosines because your particular solution might have that. And then uh, a textbook might give you a uh, solution that just involves a sign and um, it can be possibly disconcerting when you're like, oh, what happened to the cosines? Like, hey, I thought we were talking about a general form solution, so what happened to cosine? Um, how can we just have a sign when our solution, when our uh, particular form of our solutions involves cosines? Like, this hopefully will reconcile that so even if it's not there it's not visible you can rest assured it's it's lurking there it's it's taken care of it's included in this package even though it's not explicitly stated